For American businessman Jimmy Haslam, success continues to be just as good as a match in diesel fuel. He's been at the helm for the Cleveland Browns since 2012, a consistently bad franchise with a 21-75-1 record, including the football futility of going 0-16. During his tenure, you've also consistently seen a carousel of different quarterbacks and head coaches, thus adorning this infamous label. You are a factory of sadness! Contrasting from his NFL performance, his NASCAR funding has consistently went towards Iowan Michael Annette. As the corporate head of Pilot Flying J, the company has funded numerous cars for Annette with very minimal success on the track. The 2018 season was one of humiliation as the same JRM equipment that won the championship Michael Annette greatly underachieved in. So I'm sure many of you are thinking, how did Michael Annette suddenly become good? Make sure to watch this brand new 180 in performance to its entirety to find out how it happened. In terms of Michael Annette, I'm sure you see him as a silver spoon undeserving driver only here because of the almighty sponsorship. After all, his pilot flying J funding has carried on since he first hit the pavement. Yet what you have to take into consideration is he was a prospect on the rise during the late 2000s, especially with his craft on restrictor plates. From 2007 to 2009, Annette competed in 10 races with his most notable performances coming with Bill Davis. And just his fourth career start, Michael Annette reached the pinnacle of racing glory, winning in Sweet Home Alabama against a highly competitive 41 car field. You may think it was a fluke win, but Annette dominated and had to fend off ARCA legend Frank Kimmel. Four months later, he did it again, fending off rising star Justin Allgaier. The Iowan was developing a niche for plate racing, and with solid sponsorship, a big break was on the horizon. Germain Racing needed money to keep its Xfinity program afloat as Geico was moving up to the organization's cup team. From that point, Michael Annette was fairly mediocre. Under the Toyota umbrella, he was largely on par with the other disappointments Brian Scott and Stephen Wallace. Driving for Germain and then Rusty Wallace, Annette didn't even have a top 5 finish in his first three campaigns. Then a handshake agreement came with the King, Richard Petty, prior to 2012. Michael Annette would drive the iconic 43 to compete for the NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship. This was his first shot, you could say, on a bigger team, so there were high expectations for Michael Annette to take the next step. From what was once a lost cause, the career of Michael Annette provided some extra tread and surprised many. Not a weekly contender, but Annette earned some top fives and placed fifth in the point standings. Forecasting down the road, he was definitely on track to earn a cup ride with the organization. Marcos Ambrose departed after 2014, and with Stanley leaving JGR, Pilot would have easily filled the sponsorship hole. Unfortunately, the tenure took a turn for the worse during the 2013 Daytona 300. Michael Annette was sidelined after breaking and dislocating his sternum during a wreck. Returning to the track on Memorial Day weekend, Annette just wasn't the same driver the season before. A lot of 11th to 14th place finishes and only one top 5 finish at New Hampshire. In result, Michael Annette and Richard Petty Motorsports would go separate ways concluding the season. Now whereas you would see other sponsors completely abandon their drivers, through these rough times, Pilot Flying J remained heavily invested in Michael Annette's career. The end result was a promotion to the NASCAR Cup Series, with Annette joining Tommy Baldwin's Cup team for the 2014 campaign. At the time, the two-car operation was sparse on sponsorship, and it made sense to promote him to the team's number 7 entry, even if, of course, Michael Annette is below average behind the wheel. What ensued was more mediocrity and massively underwhelming results for the NASCAR veteran. Michael Annette found himself getting into too many wrecks and ultimately placing 33rd to 36th in the championship standings. With H. Scott Motorsports turning the key and liquidating the shop, Annette faced a murky future alongside his murky statistics. Yet, looking at facts only, Michael Annette led more laps in the 2016 season than Casey Kane. And you have to take into consideration, Annette was driving an HMS satellite car, whereas Kane was on the mothership itself. Coincidentally, Annette would take over the five car beginning with the 2017 season, in Xfinity that is. Dale Earnhardt Jr. rounded out his Xfinity roster with four full-timers, with Pilot Flying J funding the car in its entirety. Through thick and thin, Pilot Flying J would finally get some positive exposure with one of the best Xfinity teams. Considering former H. Scott driver Justin Allgaier's season prior, I expect more of the same from Michael Annette here in 2017. 
Yet for his freshman season at Junior Motorsports, it was the typical Michael in that season. Nothing flashy, but he could take a 17th place car and finish in the top 15. He made the 12 driver postseason, but just couldn't perform in the first round. Meanwhile, his fellow teammates William Byron, Justin Allgaier, and Elliott Sadler all made the championship four. To many, Michael Annette greatly underperformed in one of Dale Jr.'s bad fast Camaros. To Annette's defense, Jason Stocker was a first year crew chief. Much like Henrik Motorsports, the five car was the fourth wheel, far from the three championship contending teammates. With nothing altered year to year, the five team knew what to expect and could build on their notes from 2017. Michael Annette was expected to pilot a decent season and possibly break his immense winless streak once and for all. Yet as the season began, if you spray painted the car brown and orange, Michael Annette's 2018 would mimic Jimmy Haslam's football team. The five team was once again a complete and unbearable train wreck in 2018. Change was made after failing to net a top 10 in the first 19 races as Jason Stocker was finally removed as crew chief. Taking over would be recently released crew chief Travis Mack. Honestly, this was a crew chief I wanted Henrik Motorsports to promote to their cup roster. He had a great audition in 2017, subbing for Greg Ives during the fall Richmond race. With the season mired in crashes and issues, Dale Jr. led 13 laps and looked rather competitive under the lights. Mack wasn't given a fair chance at Levine Family Racing as he was the least of Casey Kane in the 95 team's issues. Now, chances are he got the axe because of the alliance changes going on with the organization. So fortunately, the homegrown Kentucky native returned to Junior Motorsports, where he actually won a championship with Chase Elliott as car chief. As for Michael Annette, he finally earned his first top 10 of the season. Only took 22 races in JRM equipment, but a 7th place finish at Bristol did the trick. Now, ending the campaign in Homestead, there was nothing defendable about Michael Annette's performance. Tyler Reddick won the series championship, with Justin Allgaier and Elliott Sadler all making it to the round of 8. And this is all while Michael Annette couldn't even make the Xfinity playoffs. At this point, you could sincerely question Michael Annette's legitimacy in this league. Two career wins in ARCA over a decade ago, followed by years upon years of mediocre NASCAR results. To many, he was a scrub saved by Pilot Flying J, and I'm sure many of you would agree concluding the 2018 season. Yet because of the financial backing, Michael Annette would return in 2019. Travis Mack would return as crew chief and hope to progress on three top tens to end the season. The major factor for a net rely with Junior Motorsports as an organization, scaling back to three full-time drivers. Defending Xfinity champion Tyler Reddick moved to RCR, and Elliott Sadler retired from full-time competition. Noah Gregson was brought in as the third driver, but the fourth seat remained vacated. The then renumbered number 8 team would become a rotational entry, pretty much the experimental car for JRM. With added focus on the Pilot Flying J team, a number change came as a result. He would grace the number one on a side door, a place many figured he wouldn't place very often. In fact, I didn't even have him making the 12 driver playoffs, reverting back to my preseason predictions. Yet on one sunny Daytona afternoon, 300 miles would change Michael Annette's career. Leading 45 laps out front, he had the dominating car towards the end of the race. Sure, nobody wanted to make a move for the lead, but much like 2008, the duo of Annette and teammate Justin Allgaier were mere unbeatable. Beginning his career 0 for 345, Annette would capture the checkered flag. Nothing better than winning your first Xfinity race at Daytona and beginning the season on a high note. But of course, this was just one race. In order to truly turn around results, Michael Annette had to become consistently good. And consistently good he would. A top 5 at Las Vegas marked as his second top 5 of the campaign. In just 3 races, he doubled his mark from 2017 to 2018. More top 10s at Phoenix, Texas, and Bristol proved the number 1 team was for real. Michael Annette's first finish outside the top 15 came at Talladega after getting junked in the big one. For comparison, he had 6 finishes below that mark entering Talladega one year prior. Looking back at the 2019 season, I would say Michael Annette was the most dependable of the JRM stable. Justin Allgaier would lead laps and contend for wins, but he was just too inconsistent. Meanwhile, you had Noah Gregson as he was a little bit too inexperienced at some of the tracks like Richmond and Dover. Meanwhile, Michael Annette was consistently a top 10 contender, and that could help him going into the playoffs. Unlike his 2017 demise, Annette advanced past the round of 12 with his lowest finish coming at the Charlotte Roval. 
Meanwhile, during the round of eight, Annette had three solid outings, which included a fourth place at Kansas. He averaged an eighth place finish, but the big three deficit would be too immense to overcome. The season would end in Phoenix after failing to advance to Homestead via a win. Albeit, from year to year, Michael Annette's numbers were a remarkable improvement. You look at his stats line and think, is this seriously the same driver that lost a playoff spot to an underfunded Ross Chastain? This just shows the difference in Dale Jr. caring about your team versus getting the scrap heap. His chemistry with Travis Mack was unparalleled by any of his previous crew chiefs, and even equipment made this season worthy of a dinner celebration. Well, anywhere besides Applebee's. As for Michael Annette's future, I can see him becoming hopefully an egoless version of Elliott Sadler. The performance isn't there to start 2020, but as the summer heat intensifies, I fully expect Michael Annette and Travis Mack to get better and better. Just maybe Michael Annette can snap his futility of never winning outside of Daytona and Talladega. Well, would you look at that, you made it to the end of this video. Make sure to give it a like, share, and of course hit that big red button below for more full tank NASCAR content. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach and then you drive.